What is the maximum current delivered to a circuit containing a 1.4 microfarad capacitor when it is connected across the following outlets? A North American outlet having a voltage RMS of 120 volts at 60 hertz, a European outlet having 240 volts at 50 hertz. Now unlike in the previous problem where it gave us the frequency we didn't need it, in this problem we do need the frequency, so that'll be toward the end. But uh, okay, so it's asking us for the maximum current. And uh, so what I could do is, is it, I have the, del the RMS delta V, so I know that I'll, uh, whenever I use RMS voltage, I have to use RMS current in the equation. So I'll need a, a conversion factor at the very end, and that conversion factor is the RMS current is equal to the max current over the square root of 2. And so my maximum current is equal to the square root of 2 times the RMS current. Now this, this is by itself, this is the, R, the current is not under, underneath the radical sign, it's outside of the radical, so it's not being square rooted. But at the very end, we'll use this conversion factor to convert from RMS. So I'm going to start using uh, Ohm's law, the general case of Ohm law, Ohm's law, delta V RMS is equal to the current RMS times uh, the impedance. And so the impedance is equal to the square root of R squared plus uh, the inductive uh, the inductive reactance minus the capacitive reactance squared. Now in the case of the current the circuits given, we have uh, an idealized current and all we've done is attach a capacitor to it. So this is equal to zero and the inductive reactance is equal to zero. So I have negative capacitance squared. Well, anytime you square something, it gets rid of the negative sign. And so I'm going to have a, an, a capacitive reactance squared, or a capacitor, yeah, so, and then I'm going to take the square root of that, and I'll have that the delta V RMS is equal to I RMS times the capacitive reactance. Now the capacitive reactance, uh, Xc, is derived from 1 over 2 pi times the frequency times the capacitance. So, and just so, to point out real quick, 2 pi times frequency, 2 pi times frequency is equal to the angular speed. So if it were to give us the angular speed uh, and not the frequency, we could, we could just substitute angular speed times the capacitance. But in this case, it gives us the frequency. And so we'll substitute this into Ohm's law. We'll get that delta V RMS is equal to the, I, the RMS current times 1 over 2 pi times the frequency times the capacitance. And then we could solve for the current by multiplying this onto both sides. So we'll get that delta V RMS times 2 pi times the frequency times the capacitance is equal to I RMS. And then we can substitute our equation for the maximum current. So uh, we'll get delta V RMS times 2 pi frequency capacitance is equal to I max over the square root of 2. And then we can multiply the square root of 2 to the other side. And we get the, the square root of 2 times delta V, v RMS times 2 pi times the frequency times the capacitance is equal to the maximum current. Okay, so the things to remember when you're plugging this in is, uh, first of all, the capacitance was given in microfarads. So we're going to times it by 10 to the negative 6. Second of all, it is asking for our current in milliamps. So whatever current we get is going to be in amps whenever we do all of our conversions, right? So we're going to multiply it by 10 to the third. Now for those people that see the obvious implication between these two numbers being in the same equation, yes, you can do things to manipulate it down so that you only have 110 with one exponent on it. That's fine. Do it if you know how. If not, then make sure you convert your capacitance first, and then at the very end, convert back to milliamps. The other great thing is, uh, whenever we drive this equation the first time, it's asking us the same question in, the, in part B. The only thing that changes is the RMS voltage. And so this part, for part one, uh, my RMS voltage was 120, and for part two, it was 240. 
Uh, this was important because I, when I was in Europe, they, they, we had to have a, a bunch of converters and stuff, transformers to run our equipment or else we had to buy all new stuff. But uh, uh, in this case, we can figure out what the maximum current's going to be in either case. So for part A, I got 89.56 milliamps. And for part B, I got 149.28 milliamps. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure you check out my blog. The link is down in the About section of this video. And on the blog, you'll find cool stuff like other videos for the same chapter. And you'll also find uh, little download links where you can download calculators to uh, basically just punch in your numbers and solve these exact problems. So you won't even have to watch the video if you don't want to. The last thing I want to say is if you leave comments on YouTube, of course I will get around to responding, but I'm much faster if you leave them at the bottom of my blog, right down there. Enjoy your day.